the family of the murdered teenager, Jimmy Mizzen, known to his friends as the Gentle Giant, have said only time will tell if the decision to release his killer early is the right one. The 16-year-old's life was violently cut short in 2008, and now, 15 years later, his parents, Margaret and Barry, are renewing their call for forgiveness. And Gargi Patel has Jimmy's story. The day after his 16th birthday, Jimmy Mizzen was excited to walk to the shop with his brother and buy his first lottery ticket. Afterwards, in this local bakery near their family home in South East London, a row broke out with local teenager Jake Farry. In a violent outburst, Farry threw a glass oven dish at Jimmy, which shattered on his chin and neck. Critically injured, Jimmy hid in a nearby storeroom, but died in the arms of his older brother Tommy as they waited for help. The investigation that followed outraged the public. But despite their heartache, Jimmy's parents made a public show of forgiveness. I don't feel anger. I feel sorry for the parents because we've got lovely memories of Jimmy. They'll have such sorrow about their son. Jake Farry was sentenced to life in prison for murder, but is due to be released next month. Barry and Margaret have been recognised for their campaigning in Jimmy's memory by telling his story to schools and communities affected by violent crime. They now hope that Jake Farry is a reformed character and even say they would consider meeting their son's killer face to face. And Jimmy's parents, Margaret and Barry, are with us now. Good morning. Fif 15 years ago since you um, lost your lovely son in such a sort of senseless and tragic way. All the work you've done since then through the foundation has all been about t t trying to understand and to forgive and to tell people how important it is that, um, that you don't judge and um, try to understand. Is that harder for you now, knowing that his, his killer is about to come out of prison, or is that something you still feel able to, um, to speak about? I think it's needed more now than ever. Um, and with Jake coming out of prison, it's going to make no difference. Uh, we need to share our message of forgiveness, uh, peace and hope far and wide. Um, it's a message that's needed. There's so much hate in this world. And just because Jake's coming out of prison, that will make no difference to us. We will continue our work um, as, for as long as we can. Has it brought a lot of feelings back for you, though, with this happening? I think so, yes, especially his 15th anniversary as well. Um, <clears throat> Jimmy was killed the day after his 16th birthday. So there's a lot of, a lot of uh, coming together of, of, of dates and that. And, and yes, it's been a bit harder this year than, than we usually manage. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's determination, as Margaret said, that we will carry on. We will bring some good at what happened to our son, um, which is what we intend to do from the beginning. We yeah. won't be beaten and something good. We haven't been beaten and something good is coming from this. Well, good for you. I think a lot of people would be surprised, perhaps, you know, that you're able to forgive in these circumstances, but it is something that's really important to you, isn't it, to, to help you deal with Absolutely. it? Absolutely. If you just go back to your, your previous question, I found it very difficult last week. It brought back all the emotions of what happened to Jimmy, and we were expecting a verdict one way or the other, um, but I think it hit me much mm. harder than I expected. And uh, um, But saying that, the work must continue, and I think um, for us, just, just continuing Jimmy's work. I know people don't understand forgiveness, and they may say, how can this couple talk of forgiveness? But after Jimmy was killed, I had to learn to lead a new life. I had to lead, and I could only do that by forgiving. Um, but by forgiving doesn't mean to say I want to be his best friend and I even want to see him. I don't. But I do want to be able to get on with my life. And I also knew after Jimmy was killed that I wanted to smile again. And if I didn't forgive this boy, mm -hmm. I would never smile again. So is it your way of coping with it? Because in a sense, I suppose you've got all those feelings yeah. about, him, you know, the person that did this, haven't you? This anger. But this is a way of dealing with it to say, actually, I'm going to put that aside. Absolutely. I, I didn't even think about it like that. But perhaps it was a way of, of me being able to deal with, with what mm -hmm. happened. And yeah, I don't know. I think so. Yeah. We, we mustn't see forgiveness in, in some sort of uh, wishy-washy way. Yeah. Forgiveness primarily is something we do for ourselves. We all get hurt. We all get hurt in some cases extremely. But the forgiveness is a way of managing that pain. And that's what we try and get across mm -hmm. to young people, to manage the pain in life. Forgiveness, you don't need someone's permission mm -hmm. to forgive them. You know, I say, I forgive you. And primarily, we do it for ourselves. Were things to go on from there, all well and good, but primarily. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we visit prisons, we share the story in prison, mm -hmm. and sometimes we, we might use the term uh, release. Rather than someone living in your head all the time, the people that have hurt you, 
release that. To us, that is forgiveness, primarily something we do for ourselves, for each other, for our family. And Jimmy's um, killer um, was up at the parole board just um, a few days ago, mm -hmm. and they would have been deciding, was it safe for him to come out? But um, for you, is it also important for you to know what is in his mind? Do you want him to show regret, to show remorse? I Would you like the conversation with him about that? Or does that not matter to you? Because, of course, it can't bring Jimmy back. No, no it can't. But I, I think trying to understand why some people do what they do... We have met murderers in prison. We have heard their stories. Why do some people behave the way they do? So I think, as Margaret has said all the way along, that she would love to know why he did what he did. Mm. Where, where has this come from? Mm. It's easy to make excuses. Well, it's poverty, it's this. Now, a lot of people are in poverty. They don't go around doing these sort of crimes. So let's try and get the reasons mm. rather than the excuses. Rather than the easy excuses, oh, we'll, we'll blame whatever it may be. What on earth is going on in some people's lives that allows them to be so violent? And you've not angry. yet had that conversation with him. We, we, we haven't, that, and we is haven't that seen it. Is that a conversation you might have? It would it would be great to actually try and understand why he... What was going on in his life? Why did he, there was a lot of previous. It's all in the public domain. Where did he do the things he did? Where did it come from? Mm. All, as he was growing up, there was one thing after another, never fully addressed. You know, th th this is the issues. And there will be young kids in our schools at the moment going down a very similar path. Mm. We need to do more. How earlier. hard would it be, Margaret, for you to sit opposite the person that took your son's life? Oh, I think it'd be very difficult. But, you know, as Barry said, in the early days, I really wanted to talk to him. I really wanted to say, what, why, why do you do the things you do? You've got two boys who live in the same area, 500 metres apart. One's so beautiful and kind and one's so unkind. I'd love to have known what was going on in his life. Um, it probably will never happen. Um, but, it, yes, of course, it would be hard. Um, and it may never happen. But we'll have to wait and see what the future holds. Um, mm. But I would like to know what, what, was, what was going on in his life, what is going on in the lives of many of these young people who commit these crimes. Um, because we tend to hate them so much, and we, but they, there might be things going on that we don't know about. And perhaps that's what we need to do with our work. Look at these young people and encourage them. Encourage them in forgiveness. And I encourage all your, 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 your listeners as well. If this world had more forgiveness, it would be a better world. And we need that right now. I know Jimmy's one of... I think you have nine children. And um, he was... <gasps> and, a, and a grandma now. Oh. And a grandma. No, a nan. A nan. A nan not a nan. nan, nan. That's very, very important. And he, he was obviously such a big part of the, oh. the family and he's yeah. not been there for 15 years but I'm sure he's continued to be you know every birthday every Christmas every yeah. Sunday he's yeah. been a big part of your family what are the ways in which he continues to live on in your oh, he, family he lives on every day in everything we do because we've got our charity so it's all around Jimmy obviously and what happened to him um, but for us Christmas Christmas Day doesn't start until we've all been to the cemetery together um, and the same on his anniversary we go to the cemetery but it's in everything even my young grandson he uh, Ray is eight he didn't know Jimmy but he talks about him all the time as if he was as if he knew him um, so we're very very lucky but our charity is what what really is keeping Jimmy's name alive and and it's growing and it's you know we we travel the country now sharing Jimmy's story um, but it's encouraging young people to to be the change makers you know if we want change and, and obviously we all do it's our young people who will be the change makers when they use their voices and they rise up then the changes will come. And Barry, how would you want Jimmy to be remembered? You know, what are your memories? Because when we do things like this, we end up talking a lot about what happened and not yeah. them as a person. The boy who sparkled. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we now give out an award in schools <laughs> and any schools in, invited to, to apply through the Mism Foundation. Uh, the Sparkle Award. Trying to oh. pick out a young student in your school that had a very similar character to Jimmy, uh, a person who brightens up the world yeah. the way Jimmy brightened up yeah. our world. Oh, Jimmy had the most beautiful smile. In every mm. photo you see of him, he was smiling. Um, he was just a joy. And I, I, I'm so proud to have been his mum. Mm. Well, listen, thank well, you I'm both proud for, to have been his dad. Oh, <laughs> for coming in <laughs> and for talking oh, to us you. this morning. You know, Thanks very absolutely. Much. Thanks thank so you. much. Thank, thank you, you for keeping his memory thank alive. Thank you for everything you've done as well to change things. It's really important. Yeah.